Hello, Sia, Book. Bonjour, Konnichiwa, Annyeonghaseyo. Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon Kennedy, and I am the resident polyglot at Drops. I speak 13 languages at different levels, and today I'm here to answer your language learning questions. So let's get started, shall we? How long would it take me to learn Korean fluently? A lot of factors come into play when trying to figure out how long it will take you to learn Korean, let alone any language. To start, how different Korean is from your native language is going to be a determining factor. So let's assume your native language is English. Korean is very distant from English, so there's a bit more of a learning curve. That means it'll take more time. The other thing to consider here is how you're counting time. So if you're counting time in days, weeks, months, years, you can get a vastly different number because what really matters is hours. So if you study one hour a week, it'll take you many more months or many more years to learn Korean than if you're studying seven hours a week. So all that said, the Defense Language Institute asserts that Korean is a category four language, meaning it's one of the most difficult languages for English speakers to learn. And this, according to them, means that it takes about 88 weeks or 2200 hours. This, of course, is an approximate number, and it'll also depend on how you're spending your study time. Active study will get you farther, faster than more passive activities. And again, that's 2200 hours. So the faster you do those 2200 hours, meaning the more hours you study per day, the faster you're going to learn the language. Whereas if you do the 22 hours over the 88 weeks, as they suggest, it'll take you 88 weeks. But if you cram more hours into your week, uh, you will learn the language faster. Can we also learn grammar on drops or just vocabulary? Drops currently is a vocabulary focused learning tool. You can, however, learn some basic phrases in our travel talk category. That said, we do not currently teach grammar, we teach vocabulary. How old were you when you started learning your first, second language? I was about 13 years old when I began taking language classes in school, though I had some exposure to Spanish earlier on. I wouldn't really consider my experience with Spanish to be a learning experience and even when I started learning a language in school I wasn't really serious about it until later on. I really seriously got into language learning as an adult when I was doing my master's degree at university. What are your tips for initiating conversations with native speakers? I suppose that my answer to this would depend on the context. Is this in person? Um, if that's the case, you can use your surroundings to initiate the conversation. For example, if you're at a restaurant, you could say a table for two, please, or four or whatever number is in your party in the language. You'll likely get a reply back or a further question. If it's at a park, you could say something like, excuse me, I couldn't help but over here, you speak Hungarian. I speak Hungarian too. Would it be all right if we chat for a bit? And that's actually something that I just did fairly recently. So I can promise you that it works. If it's online, your approach might be a little bit different. Your intent might be to set up a regular exchange with the person. And if that's the case, I wrote a really thorough guide on exactly this. The link is fluent in three months.com slash language dash exchange. But to save you some reading, I would send this person a message letting them know that I'm looking for an exchange partner and I think that they'd be a good fit and some of the reasons why I think they'd be a good fit. Uh, usually I've discovered them through a platform for language exchanges where they've shared a bit about themselves. So that would be how I would approach them. Can you attain some level of fluency with drops or is it meant for vocabulary building? Vocabulary is the foundation to any language. You can't become fluent unless you know the words you need to use to speak the language. So it's definitely a core step you need to take in the direction of fluency. That said, it's not a complete learning solution. In fact, no language learning resource 
is a complete solution. It needs to be used in combination with other things, language lessons or exchanges, a course that'll teach you some of the grammar, and of course, lots and lots of listening. How do I find an exchange partner for free? There are tons of language learning platforms and communities where you can find exchange partners. There's italki, Tandem, Meetup, My Conversation Exchange, and those are just a few. You can find groups on Facebook like the Polyglot Group. There are plenty of places where you can find partners. It's all about your approach when it comes to building long-term exchanges with potential partners. Again, I recommend checking out the post fluentin3months.com slash language dash exchange for a list of places where you can find partners as well as tips for connecting with potential partners. Do you have any tips for learning Japanese and Italian? So Japanese and Italian are two very different languages, but I think my initial approach to learning both would be similar with a couple of exceptions. First, here is what I would do for both. I would, one, start learning lots of vocabulary, especially related to topics I'm interested in. I would, two, learn how to introduce myself, talk about where I'm from, what I do, my interests, and my family. Then, I would learn how to ask someone for that same information about them. What's your name? Where are you from? Where do you live? What do you do? Are you married? Do you have kids? I would three, then take lessons with a tutor. And in that first lesson, practice my self-introduction. I'd ask my tutor to write down anything that I don't know or don't understand in the chat, and then I would study whatever they wrote down between lessons. And then four, I would find a grammar, a book of some sort maybe, or an online course that I can use as a reference whenever I need to learn a specific grammar point. Now, for Japanese, I would do a few more things. First, I would start learning hiragana. It's simple. It'll open up more resources to you and it'll help you with pronunciation. Scripts, our companion app, is actually where I did exactly that for Japanese. And then once I'm fully comfortable with hiragana, I would go on and learn katakana, and then I would start learning some kanji. For both, I'd also make sure to get lots and lots of exposure to the language. I find podcasts, listen to music, watch TV shows, and maybe even try my hand at reading. Graded readers are a great way to start reading early on, but I personally use LINK, that's L-I-N-G-Q, to start reading right away in the languages that I'm learning. Is learning X language worth it nowadays? Absolutely. Yes, traveling is hard in recent times, but our need for connection is still there. And what better way to connect with people than through their language? I have tons of friends all over the world that I've met through language because of language, and most of them I initially met online. The travel and meeting in person often came after. As far as with technology, all the translation tools and things that are available now, I would still say yes. There's still a long way all of those tools have to go to catch up to what we are able to do on our own when we learn a language in communicating with someone else. And technology also removes the personal touch. Talking with someone through a machine, some translating device or something like that, versus talking to someone in their language in real time and them saying that you've made this effort to learn their language and that immediacy that happens with doing this, I just don't think that anything will ever replace that. How can you best learn grammar? This, like many questions, depends on the language that you're learning and how different it is from your native language. My approach is that I don't particularly worry about it until I get to the intermediate stage. You can learn set questions and responses without worrying about grammar. For example, with Travel Talk and Drops, you can ask, how much money is this? Without worrying about the grammar needed to form that sentence by learning it as a set phrase. Once I start trying to form my own thoughts, have deep conversations and do more than introductions or getting by, 
that's when I start to learn grammar on an as needs basis. What you need grammar wise is usually pretty obvious. For example, if I wanted to talk about something in the past, but don't know the past tense, my need is to learn how to talk about things in the past, how to use the past tense in the language. So I can go use my grammar reference book, work out how to do this, and then most importantly, try it out. I usually bring this grammar point to a lesson with a tutor, letting them know in advance that I want to talk about an event in the past, maybe what happened that previous weekend, and then I ask them to pay special attention to how well I'm using the past tense. Do you have any tips for learning endangered languages? I really want to learn Hokkien. Yes, this is something that we're very passionate about at Drops, and I myself even have some experience with an endangered language, Breton. We actually even teach several endangered languages at Drops, including Ainu, Samoan, Maori, and Hawaiian. So my recommendations for learning an endangered language are the following. One, find universities that teach courses on the language. Contact the professor, find out what resources they use, see if you can join a class if it's local, or see if the professor has students they can connect you with. Two, try to find organizations that work to preserve the language. They often have resources or even members that you can talk to. Three, learn the majority local language. So for example, Chinese. You may be more likely to find resources to learn Hokkien from Chinese than from English, like French for Breton. Sometimes learning a different language first opens up more doors to you with the endangered language itself. Four, start creating your own resources and share them. Others interested in the language may reach out to you for collaboration, to share what they know, or even to offer corrections. And five, look at the old FSI, that's Foreign Service Institute, and Peace Corps courses. They're often online and they cover a lot of the lesser learned languages. Glossica is another resource that in particular offers Hokkien, I believe. I hope you enjoyed this Ask the Polyglot session. We plan to make them more regularly, so keep an eye on our Instagram stories. We will share when we're accepting more questions, and I would love to answer your language questions in the next round. So be sure to check out our language stories and follow along. In the meantime, happy language learning.